When you build an interactive business app, usually the types of actions you add are single actions like approving a user or making a refund. But oftentimes you want to trigger a sequence of actions or even create different branches depending on your condition. And to implement these more complex cases in JET, you can now use automations. Automations consist of several key blocks. Triggers define what action initiates the workflow. Steps are the actions or events that run sequentially or in a parallel or according to a custom logic after the trigger action has been executed. Parameters allow you to both input dynamic values from the app into the automation and output the results of the automation so that you can use it back in the app. Now, as an example, let's take a portal that's been built for contractors to manage their projects and tasks. On the task tracking page, a contractor can see their tasks and update the status of the task. If simply updating a record is not enough, then we can use automations to add additional actions. Our additional actions will be sending a Slack notification to the manager if uh, the new status is finished and adding a new record to the logs table otherwise. First, we select the trigger action, which in our case is the record update button. But you can trigger a workflow from any action for that matter. Then choose run workflow from the list of operation types, which will immediately get you to the workflow builder or automation editor with the trigger action already on the canvas. Now, to add your first step, just click the plus button. There are two types of steps. The first being the action steps, which could be further divided into the data actions and the in-app actions. Data actions allow you to interact with the data from different data sources. You can choose the one you've already connected or you can connect a new one by selecting from the list of the integrations. And the second one is the rules or the logic steps, which allow you to create the branching and run different scenarios based on the condition. You can also add a new step at any point in your billing process, both before and after the steps, as well as we order them by holding and dragging. For logic steps, you write a logical expression that defines on what condition which branch will be activated. The most common ones are equals, less, and more. In our example, we want to check if the new status of the task is finished or if it's anything else, which will create two different branches in our workflow. To do that, we'll use the equals operator and we'll fetch the value from the status input field in the app and put it in one of the arguments of the expression. We can reference any dynamic values from different pages or from other steps in the workflow, user or team properties, values from API responses, and so on. And we'll talk about referencing dynamic values in more detail later in this video. To configure an action step, you select the resource and the table. And after this, you'll be prompted to choose the operation. In our case, it's updating tasks, creating a log, and sending a Slack message. You can add actions for any data source, be it the third-party app, the database, or a custom API. Almost all the workflows you'll build will use dynamic values from the app. To fetch the value from the inside the automations editor, you can either reference it from the step itself or create a parameter that will receive and store the value so that it can be referenced later on. In our example, for updating the tasks record, we first need to reference the ID from the selected row of the tasks table to tell JET which record we're updating. To do that, we just click into the ID field, click the tab with all the components, then find the tasks table and choose selected row and ID. Then follow the same process with the status field, but in this case, we grab it from the new status input field. For creating the new logs record, we'll reference the same value, new status, but we'll use parameters instead. To set it up, select the trigger action and add a new parameter. Then we'll need to fetch the new status value in the parameter input. Now, uh, when we go back to the workflow builder, you can reference this parameter from anywhere in the workflow, and this parameter will contain the value of the new status field at the moment of uh, the trigger action execution. In general, regardless of the method, you can use the fetched values anywhere in the workflow, including formulas. Namely, you can concatenate the Slack message text with the deadline value of the task, providing some extra detail. 
You can also store the results of the workload to use them back in the app. For this, you create the outputs and reference the values manually or just use the default settings, uh, which will store the results of the last step uh, as outputs. Last but not least, we need to test and debug our workflow. For this, we can either run an individual step or run the whole workflow. The results will be displayed for each step and for the workflow as a whole.